on. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Audrey. I am a program manager for Cope Health Solutions and Cope Health Scholars. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you all today and talk a little bit more about not only our Cope Health Scholars program, but also our other workforce development programs as well that we have for students to get you that hands on experience so that you are ready for your future career in healthcare and the workforce. So I understand we have a mix of, you know, students as well as some academic advisors from the different community colleges. So welcome to everyone. And hopefully we can provide you all that information um, to not only help um, yourself in your future career, but also help other students. If you're one of the academic advisors, um, we're happy to partner as well and have additional presentations. But really what we are focused on and what students come to us for are some of these questions that are listed here. So I think I want a career in healthcare, but I'm not really sure how to go about that or, you know, if I really do want this career in healthcare because I haven't experienced it before, what are all the different options or pathways in healthcare? And also, you know, you want to help people, but how do you really craft your personal story as an MD or an RN or a PA after getting through, you know, all the classes in undergrad and all the classes in community college, how do we really apply that to what you're actually going to see in your future career? And also some people are looking more into population health or they're looking into public health. Well, we can offer that experience as well through the variety of programs that we have to offer. So before I get started and jump into all the nitty gritty details about what we have to offer, just want to give you guys a little bit of an introduction to myself and kind of where I'm at with my career path. So my name again is Audrey. I'm a program manager specifically for the Cope Health Scholars Program at Mission Hospital in Mission Viejo and Laguna Beach. Now, if you would like to contact me, please feel free to send me an email. Please just note that you will get an automated response as of right now, um, and I will get back to those emails when I'm back in office on Monday, May 1st, but please feel free to just send those emails out um, before or after this presentation, and I'm happy to further connect. But my educational background, so I graduated from Irvine Valley College, actually, um, with my associates in 2015, then transferred to the University of California, Riverside, where I got my bachelor's in neuroscience. And from there, I did a one-year master's course in nutrition at Case Western Reserve University, fully online at the time due to COVID. So that's a little bit of my education. I was a Cope Health Scholar actually at the site that I currently oversee. I was also a high school volunteer at the same location, um, but as part of the program, I was a department coordinator and director of departmental operations. So as an integral part of the leadership team, which you all could be as well if you join the program, and then a health scholar assistant afterwards, and now a program manager. So I am a pre-medical student, so I definitely understand where a lot of students on the call are at. It's a very difficult journey. It takes a while, and it takes sometimes more time than you think it's going to and getting you know that head start that early start to all this hands-on clinical experience and exposure is really really key to part of that success as well my interests lie in preventative medicine k-6 stem education food security basic needs nutrition holistic health and wellness and program development and process improvement so that's actually where I um, really found my love in being a program manager as of right now in my career path is just it merges all these different interests together. I get to mentor students. I get to come up with different plans and processes so that our program, you know, really becomes essential to the hospital. And we see the benefits in our patient satisfaction scores, our HCAP scores. And that's really, you know, where my passion lies is integrating all of these in a future career in medicine. So as part of Cope Health Solutions, the Cope Health Scholars Program is just one of our four workforce development programs. And the reason we call them workforce development programs is because we want you to get that experiential learning, but we also want it to be something to help pipeline students into these 
future healthcare career paths, and even job opportunities right off the bat that are entry level that are really needing, you know, that critical support. Many of our hospital sites across the board right now are experiencing difficulties with having adequate staffing just due to people having to call out sick and, you know, not enough people in healthcare. And so those are all, you know, real issues. And that's what we try to feed into or we try to support is building that workforce pipeline from the ground up. So starting from our program to those entry level positions. And if you don't go into an entry level position and you get straight into grad school, hopefully we'll see you coming back to either your home site or one of our partner sites in the future. So in an effort to do that, we have um, different ways to expose you to different healthcare roles. So all of our health scholars get the opportunity to actually see healthcare right by the patient bedside with the nurses, with the physicians, with the technicians, working alongside them to improve the patient care and listen to the patient's needs. Now you do get to see then all those different career paths and that's helpful for some individuals because a lot of times when um, people start to think about healthcare, they think nurses, doctors, um, sometimes physician assistants, but a lot of times respiratory therapists, physical therapists, laboratory, phlebotomy, those kind of don't pop up right away for a lot of students. And so for some of our students, they get to go through the program, they get to see all those different career paths, and they might decide on something completely different from where they started because they now discovered something new for themselves. We also provide a platform for professional development and mentorship through your program managers, as well as through the site, through the different connections that you make and the network that you start to expand there. We also have resources and guidance. Our company has a lot of, you know, um, top team members who do healthcare consulting. And if you're looking into that, or if you want to see that business aspect of things, there's definitely people to connect to as well. We do have educational webinars. So similar to things like this, we do host, um, panel presentations with our Copalt Scholars alumni. We have all scholar meetings where we call in some of our physicians or nurses or um, other individuals in the hospital, even some people in quality management, risk management, to really talk to our scholars about why is all of this important? Why is this network and why is this connection in healthcare so important to us in pushing forward and making sure that we have individuals to fill these roles in the future? And not just any individuals, but people who already have that experience and who are prepared to further the missions and values of our different hospital sites. We also have employment opportunities, so that could be two pathways there. That could be any of our partner sites, so if you're looking to be a patient care technician, emergency medical technician, um, physical therapy aid, all of those different pathways to entry levels in the hospital, we will support you. We can't guarantee employment, but what I can say is that our sites are very open to hiring health scholars because they've seen scholars in action. They've seen the value that the health scholar program brings. And so they really like having those individuals that they can already vouch for and attest to. And a lot of times they consider you kind of half hired already because you already know the hospital and how it runs. There's also the other end of it where you could be employed by Cope Health Solutions or Cope Health Scholars. And so for us, we are always looking at different ways to get our students into not only the positions in the hospital, but also our own positions as well. So you help to grow the future of healthcare in that same capacity that we may have helped you while you were in the program. In a health scholar assistant position, you can be a health scholar assistant at the same time as being a COPE health scholar. That's actually what I did. So I was employed, but I was also still gaining my clinical experience on the floor while getting the healthcare admin side of things through being a health scholar assistant and also leadership team member. We do also have a partnership with the Princeton Review. So the Princeton Review, you guys may have already heard of, um, does test prep for MCAT, GRE, NCLEX. And so our partnership with them extends to two different things. We do have the offers and discounts. So you can get a 15% off of your course that you plan to take with the Princeton Review as a health scholar, 30% if you're a leadership team member at the time. 
or you could also um, benefit from our monthly workshop series with them where they host a variety of workshops from interview tips to um, writing your personal statement to tips on taking some of these exams that you're going to have to take for grad school programs. So we offer that as well. And then we also have exclusive benefits when applying to Keck Graduate Institute. So this is not Keck with USC, this is Keck with the Claremont Colleges. Um, they have a variety of graduate programs and through those graduate programs, health scholars who graduate from the health scholar program can get perks when it comes to applying for those. That could include, you know, one less letter of recommendation, guaranteed interviews, priority consideration for scholarships, depending on which program in particular you're looking for. Additionally, you'll graduate from the Health Scholar Program with a certificate, so after 280 hours, certificate in pre-licensed clinical care and patient experience from the Keck Graduate Institute. All right, so just going into a little bit deeper of what is really the true value of being a health scholar. So we'll go into the scope of practice of being a health scholar, but from the words of some of our alumni, it's really getting that hands-on experience, learning from the staff members, hearing what the staff members have to say, what they say to the patients, what they say about different conditions, how they treat those different conditions, finding out that dynamic in healthcare by being a part and an integral part, so to speak, of the healthcare system. Now, we also have a couple of alumni who have already gotten into um, different graduate programs. And you have to think that, you know, we have been around for 20 plus years with Hogue Hospital actually being the very first site that we partnered with. And so there are a ton of alumni and you do get access to our alumni network as a Cope Health Scholar. And so that'll give you opportunities to connect with some of these individuals as well who have been a part of the program and are currently employed by a hospital site employed by Cope Health Solutions or even already in the graduate programs of their choices. And so for this student who went to medical school, figuring out, you know, the different ranges of patients, the different departments that you could be a part of or that you may be interested in or think you're interested in, because some students may have the thought that they want to go into emergency medicine, and that is a very intensive field. Some go in and they say, yes, this is exactly where I want to be. Others will come out of it saying, you know, I didn't realize that was the extent of the work that gets done in the ED and I don't think I'm a good fit for it. So they find some other specialty that they then are a part of in the future, but also being able to speak with the patients right on that level that you have to connect with them. Those are things that you can get from being a part of the program. The student um, got into nursing school and, you know, one of the advantages for nursing school students is you have already learned a lot of the terminology and you have already learned a lot of the skills. That includes for our patient care technicians as well. Many of the skills that they learn through our program are the same skills that they are learning but now able to do independently as a patient care technician or a certified nursing assistant. And so learning that and learning all the complications that can come with that can uh, put you at a huge advantage when you are going into these professional programs because you already know how to speak to this. You already know what could come from having multiple conditions, from speaking with patients who are in different um, stages of possibly, you know, the discharge process, the grieving process. It's the whole spectrum because you see people from all stages of life. And then also from one of our site employees. So you do get that opportunity as well to possibly get employment if that's what you're looking for. I've had scholars at my site who don't finish the program because they got poached um, by our staff members saying like, hey, you work really hard. We love working with you. We think you'd be a good fit. And, you know, they end up getting employment before their 280 hours. And so at some sites, you can continue the program. Other sites, you would have to transfer out to maybe a different site. Um, but it is, you know, a really great opportunity to get that employment because they've seen how you work. They've seen that you understand how the hospital runs. And now they can be more confident in having you as a future employee at their respective, you know, site or at their respective office. 
So the different programs that we have, and I know this um, conference is spanning all of California, so some of you may be closer to a site that actually offers some of these other programs that are listed here. But we'll focus mainly on health scholars since that's available at all of our 20 plus sites. But we do also have, just for knowledge, right, the Care Navigator program. For those of you who are interested more in public health and care coordination, maybe not so much the direct patient care, but working with patients from the time they get to the hospital to the time they're discharged and also post-discharge to make sure that they're following through, they're being taken care of, and they are following all of these steps that they should be taking after discharge. That's really what our care navigators are supporting with and learning through their program. There's also a medical assistant program. So for those of you who are ready to, you know, find employment right after and do something in ambulatory care, that would be a great program because it does prepare you for the medical assistance licensing exam. And again, no guarantee in getting a job right after, but there are pipelines opportunities to get a medical assistant position at the hospital sites that you complete that program at. And for those of you who are currently high school students, there could be a junior health scholar program near you. That is for our students 16 to 17 years old who are looking to jumpstart their healthcare career even earlier um, than most students and starting to shadow our health scholar mentors as well as physicians and nurses in the field through their time in the junior health scholar program. So a little bit of a breakdown of what this means then. So medical assistant is three to seven months. It does consist of lecture-based as well as lab-based skills and also didactic. That's how this particular program and pathway gets you ready for that clinical um, licensing exam for medical assistant. And we actually just recently graduated our first class of medical assistant. So if you follow us on Instagram and we'll give you all of our different Instagram handles at the end of this presentation, you'll be able to see our latest updates and you should see a photo of that graduating class for our first medical assistant program. These are some of the different topics that they go over. I'm not going to dive into each one since I know you have a copy of the presentation as well. But again, it is going to be a lot of practical skills, but also taught by our medical assistant instructors and some of our employees at Cope Health Solutions as well, in addition to the nurses and other people at the site that these are hosted at. And so medical assistant in particular is only available currently at four of our sites. So if you're in Central Coast area, you should have the option at Mendocino Coast. If you're in Hawaii, Castle is going to be one. And then Howard and Ukiah is in Northern California. And then Central Valley Network is going to be in the Central Valley Fresno area. There's a couple of hospital sites that are included in the entire Central Valley Network. All right, for our Care Navigator Scholars, so if you're interested in pursuing a career in public health, this is definitely a great program. Again, only offered at certain sites currently. It's going to be St. Joseph's in Orange, so South Orange County, as well as Riverside County at Kaiser Permanente Riverside. Or if you're in L.A., Martin Luther King Jr. Community Hospital would be another option for this program. And our care navigators can be alongside with the health scholar program. So we've had health scholars who have transitioned to care navigator and received both certificates in the pre-licensed clinical care and patient experience through the health scholar program, as well as through this um, care coordination and patient experience for the care navigator program. So through this, you are really working on those social determinants of health, that continuation of care, starting from when a patient is admitted all the way to after a patient is discharged, what their plans are, what their options are. So you'll learn about the different health insurances, what that means for where a patient can actually go. So sometimes patients don't have a choice in where they end up after because it's a restriction on the insurance or availability in where they are able to actually go for maybe that assisted living or care that they need with the condition that they have. So you're working with social workers, case managers in the hospital, and assisting and seeing how the intricacies of this career path actually works. 
our junior health scholar program. So for any of you who are high school students, this is a three or nine month option, 164 hours. The shifts are a little bit different from our health scholar program, sometimes just two hours um, because of, you know, the just scheduling wise, our health scholars have a lot more flexibility. Our junior health scholars typically are in school most of the day and then they come to their shifts after. So there is that adjustment there. But as a junior health scholar, you have a very similar scope of practice to the health scholars, a little bit more restrictive since you are trained, yet you are still a high school student, but still working in that direct patient care setting and working with our health scholars. So you can be enrolled in high school um, and be a part of the program, but it has to be a junior health scholar program and currently offered in our Northern California Central Valley site as well as in Hawaii and Washington. And then here down in Southern California area, the one we have is Eminent Health in West Covina. And all this information is available on our website. So feel free to explore and see if the program that you're looking for is anywhere near the area you're at. Now for the Health Scholar Program, this is the one we focus on because it really is the almost all encompassing because all of our sites do have this program is the program where you do still get the graduate certificate from the Keck Graduate Institute, but this one's in pre-licensed clinical care and patient experience. And you are doing at least one four hour shift per week. So it's not a big commitment. You just need to figure out where that four hour shift is going to go. And those shifts are very flexible because you choose your own schedule while you are a part of the program. So for most most students, they might pick, you know, before school, after school, or before work, after work, because we have usually a 6 to 7 a.m. start, and then in four-hour blocks and increments, including the 6 to 10 or 7 to 11 at night. Um, so there definitely are ways to work with your schedule and make sure that you're able to fit in your shift every week. Some students will do two shifts a week. Some students will do six shifts a week on our three-month track. It really depends on, you know, how much time do you have to contribute to the program? How much time do you have currently in your schedule? And is that changing anytime soon? And also how quickly do you need to accumulate your hours? So are you starting pretty early? If you are, maybe a nine or a 15 month track where it's two or one shift a week would be perfectly fine. But if you're applying for nursing school really, really soon or medical school really soon, and you got a little bit of a late start, you still have the three month option to really, um, you know, speed things up and put in all of those hours since that is six, four hour shifts a week to graduate from the program and get those 280 hours by the time you are applying. This is firsthand experience and you do participate in different initiatives that are improving different aspects of the hospital and the care that is provided and the processes within the hospital. There is again that professional development, pipeline into entry level positions and getting to network with healthcare leaders. I think that's one of the keys is, you know, Healthcare is a pretty small place. It doesn't seem that way, but it's really, really common to bump into someone that you've worked with before, even if it's a completely different hospital setting, completely different place. At one point, you're going to bump into the people that you've worked with. And so it's a great way to start building those connections and building that network for yourself as you seek to further your career in healthcare. So our prerequisites, you do need to be 18 or older, complete a health screening and background clearance. The reason for that is you are badged at a hospital site. So we need to make sure that you meet all the criteria that the staff members do to get badged at a hospital setting as well. Have your high school degree or GED at the time that you are um, going to start shifting. So right now, if you're a high school student, if you will be 18 by the time of the training for the site that you're you know, planning on applying to, and you will have already graduated from high school by the time that you are starting the program in June, you're more than qualified for our summer class. It's the 18 years or older that gets a little bit shaky with our high school students, but we're happy to work with you through that and make sure that you have the support that you need and you know when the earliest cycle you could apply for would be if you're seeking to get into the program. 
We also require for active health care insurance during the time that you're a health scholar because you are not employed. And so if anything does happen, um, we do want kind of that safety net of you having your health insurance at that time. So your role as a health scholar, how does this actually help you? And why do we talk like there's no other program out there, right? There really isn't because we do give a very broad scope of practice to our health scholars. We do all of our training in-house. Everyone gets the same 30 hours of training across the board, across all of our sites, which includes online modules, as well as um, our in-person trainings that teach you all the skills that you need to perform that basic patient care. So your role is not just limited to, hey, guide this visitor to where they need to be, or um, can you bring this cup of water to this patient or this food or drink, whatever it may be. It's also going to include rounding on patients, answering their call lights. A lot of patients complain about not being, you know, told that someone's on their way. And and even just answering the call light to see if that's something you can help out with. If it's not something you can, but you can get assistance, even getting that assistance, you know, a couple seconds earlier makes a huge difference when it comes to the patients at the end of their stay, rating how their stay went, if they were hurt or not. You do see that difference when there is a health scholar in the unit or there is not a health scholar in the unit. And that's why we call our health scholars integral parts of the patient care team. You're also promoting those floor initiatives, but then there's there's some things you can do when the staff says you can, um, but they themselves do not have to be in the room. So that could include discharging patients, ambulating non-fall risk patients, meaning walking patients that are not high fall risk, taking patient vitals, as well as feeding patients too. But then you have a couple of things that you're going to need the staff to one, approve, but also to be present for. And those are usually the tasks that require two people to begin with, including bathing, toileting and repositioning since you are turning a patient from one side to the other. And so there needs to be a person on the other side to hold on to the patient at all times. You'll also be able to observe procedures and office visits. So as long as there's approval from the staff members and also from the patient and their family members, Health scholars can go in there and watch all kinds of procedures. So I've had scholars watch tracheotomies, um, GI tubes being taken out, facial reconstruction during, you know, a severe trauma. And then in labor and delivery across our sites, you get to watch vaginal and C-section births. Um, when they happen on the floor. One of the interesting ones that happened at my site recently was a scholar, or actually two of my scholars on two different occasions were asked to um, record the delivery. And so they didn't actually get to watch it um, directly, but they were watching it from a camera um, because they had like the selfie stick that the family gave them and they were recording it. But that was still an experience for them. And for, you know, the family members, they were so grateful because they said now they have, you know, this memory to take home with them. So not only did you play a role in that, you got that learning experience, but you also um, were able to be a part of those really neat first moments with their newborn, um, which is really, really great for a lot of our scholars and great for that experience as well. There are going to be some restrictions because you are not a licensed provider, and so there are certain things that are outside of the scope of practice, and that includes translating and interpreting clinical information. So what we mean by that is not that if you speak a foreign language, you cannot speak to the patient in that foreign language. That is totally fine, and it's probably even better sometimes because they feel so lonely and you know separated, isolated, because no one is speaking to them in the language that they're most comfortable in so that everyday conversation totally fine. What we're talking about here is not translating medical information from a physician or from a nurse because we don't want any miscommunications in that. Handling medication is also not okay. Acting as a sitter because most sitters are there because these are psych patients that need constant monitoring. And so um, as a health scholar, you do not have the training to provide that. And also ambulating fall risk patients because that is a very high risk in case the patient does fall. Um, and they're most likely a patient who is not stable and is still trying to stabilize before being discharged. So in terms of how our enrollment process works then, so we do have an application that has four essay questions and 
an interview as well that could be in person or virtual, depending on the site that you are looking into. Now, what is, you know, the application and interview and a common question, right? Is this a weeding out process? Is this our way of saying like, nope, you're not going to be a part of the program? And that's not what I like to call this because we are educational experience and workforce development. So I want you guys to think about the application and the interview as just another part of that, as that practice, right? Because you are going to have to apply an interview for jobs for the schools, the programs that you're going to be going for in the future. And that's a lot of applications and interviews. And the more practice that you get early on, the better it is for you, right? And so our interviews are actually hosted MMI or multiple mini interview style to really be the same as most medical schools, some of the nursing schools, some of the PA schools, so that you're getting that experience early on of different types of interviewers coming from our leadership team and how how they each react differently because that's what you're going to see later down the line. So we really just want to see what is your passion and what is your motivation for going into healthcare? How's the program going to help you? What are you hoping to gain from the program? And what are we going to be able to give to you as part of the Health Scholar program? Then after all of that, there's the health screening and there is a one-time program fee. Again, that program fee is covering quite a bit though. It does cover your certificate from the Keck Graduate Institute, your background check, your health clearance is also covered in that, as well as training days. If your site offers you know, lunches for training days, that's also covered there. And additionally, it's also the logistics in getting our scholars out at the different timeframes that we promise, depending on the three, nine, or 15 month tracks. There is a 30 hour training and examinations because as we mentioned, you are going to be going in and assisting with these patients directly. So we need to make sure that you're going to be able to do those in a safe manner. There is quarterly training because you are rotating through different departments each rotation or every three months. And so you need to know the specifics and any additional prerequisites that might come with some of these departments. And then every quarter or every three months, you'll rotate to new departments, completing the minimum of 280 hours in order to get the certificate. Now, another common question is once I complete the 280, do I have to graduate from the program? And the answer to that is no. If you would like to stay longer, you can always extend your stay in the program. I was in the program for three years. There were six months of those, though, that were all COVID um, and our site was closed, but was still working on the leadership team during that time. We've had scholars stay for four or five years. I think, you know, there's even scholars who have been in the program since like 2015, 2012. So it's really up to what is in kind of your journey right now. What are the different things and can you balance it with the program? And is the program giving you everything that you still need? Because for some of our scholars, they just want to explore more. They still want to continue to get that clinical experience. Others would like to join the leadership team and you have to be a part of the program still to be a part of the leadership team. So for those students, they're looking to expand kind of not just their skills in the clinical setting, but also their soft skills and their management skills, and they choose to stay in the program longer. So definitely flexible and lots of different ways to go. This is just an example of the clinical rotations that you could be a part of. Now, this does not apply to any specific site. This is just in general, what does it look like? And so um, depending on what site you go to, there could be different departments that are not on here, and there could be some that are on here that are not available at the site. If you have specific needs, like you know exactly where you want to go in healthcare or think you know where you want to go, but you want to see that department, I would really suggest speaking to that program manager and asking them, you know, what is available at their hospital site because they may or may not have what you're looking for. If that's the only site near you, it's still a good experience to see. But if there are multiple sites and you're trying to choose, a lot of our scholars choose for two different reasons. One is the distance and the location from where they are currently located or living. And two is usually the selection of departments that are available. But these are just some general ideas to get you started. And you can speak more to specific team members as to what their sites have to offer.
So all of our locations, I'm not going to read through this list, but we are in a very extensive um, area here in Southern California in terms of our reach, but we also have Central Valley, Central Coast, and Northern California. And then for those of you who may be transferring to Washington or Hawaii, you could be close to one of these um, areas as well, but we do have four sites in Washington and one site in Hawaii. Our deadlines and program fees, deadlines really depend on the site. So I would suggest going to our website and looking at the dates and deadlines. Every program also has different dates and deadlines. So if you're looking at medical assistant, junior health scholar, care navigator, definitely reference the site because it'll tell you um, which location has which date or deadline. And these are the program fees that we have for the different tracks. And we also have our Instagram as well. So the Cope Health Scholars one is the general Instagram that we have for all of our different sites. So that's our central one. But if you are looking in a certain area, you are close to Inland Empire, Orange County, Hawaii, you can also follow our region specific accounts. Um, the region accounts will have all of the sites that are considered within their region in there. So you can get more specific updates to the sites that you may be in interested in or looking at through some of these region-specific accounts. All right, and here is a QR code. So if this is of interest to you, if you're like, I want to get started as soon as possible to jumpstart my healthcare career and get that hands-on experience, you can scan this QR code. It's three questions. It's just your first name, last name, and email. And a person from our application team will be reaching out to you to get more information as to which locations you might be interested in or any general questions that you might have so that they can refer you to the correct team member, but this will add you to our mailing list so you'll get all of the latest updates with regards to our program by scanning and filling out this code. All right, and if you are ready to apply, you're like, let me just see the application. Let me get started and see what those essay questions look like. You are more than welcome to go to our application portal um, and see what that is looking like, what questions you would have to answer. And if you have any questions regarding the application or the application process, please feel free to contact our admi admissions team. And also you can scan this um, QR code, which will take you directly to the application portal itself. All right, and with that being said, I will go ahead and stop there for any questions that anyone might have. All right, I see in the chat, I'm just going back. So Northern California, yes, um, the two locations right now are those Adventist health locations you saw on the screen. And so um, if those are not currently near the areas that you're at, I don't know where we're expanding to next, but you're more than welcome to email our admissions team to see if there's any other sites that are closer. But currently those are our two locations. Um, for Care Navigator, yes, currently there are no Care Navigator sites over in Northern California. Right now, it's mostly Southern California that has the Care Navigators, but definitely keep an eye out because we are continuously expanding our different programs. And so there could be an opportunity somewhere down the line um, for the Care Navigators who are in Northern California. Okay. If an applicant was not selected as a participant, are they able to get feedback on their application and interview? Yes, definitely. So um, we don't want to just leave you hanging. If you're like, why didn't I get in? What could I have done better? We are more than happy to sit down with you and discuss that. We do take notes on all of our interviews and keep those in our records. And so we can definitely, you know, have that one-on-one -on -one to discuss, you know, what might have happened during the application or interview process. You would just reach out to that site's program manager and they could coordinate that for you. Um, the question is, with the Health Scholar program, will we get any hands-on experience within the pediatrics department? Really great question there. Yes, it depends on the site that you are looking at. So um, I'm more familiar with the Orange County site because that's where I reside. But for example, here in Orange County, if you were to ask me if you should come to Mission Hospital, if you are focused on pediatrics and NICU, I would turn you away. The reason I would is because for my site, 
Um, we are not associated with pediatrics and NICU because it's part of CHOC. We do have a portion of our hospital that is uh, dedicated to that, but it is part of CHOC, so it's separate from Mission Hospital. In the Orange County region, the only site that has pediatrics as of now is Kaiser Permanente Anaheim. If you're not residing within Orange County, but you're residing elsewhere, I would email the admissions team and see if they can get you in touch with someone in your area who would know if the sites near you do have pediatrics. But if your site does have pediatrics, yes, you can get the hands-on experience within that department. Likely as they'll just have like special training because it's a different patient population, but all of our um, different locations and our different departments are all hands-on clinical experience. So there is going to be that hands-on component, even if it's a pediatrics department. Um, is there a program like this on the East Coast, i.e. New York? That's a great question as well. So our company is actually both California and New York, but we don't have any of these um, health scholar sites, unfortunately, on the East Coast or Midwest. Currently, we are just um, on the West Coast, but hopefully we'll expand soon, although we do have offices both in um, LA as well as New York. Audrey, I actually have a question uh, for you, okay? Um, two things, really, uh, somewhat related. Uh, is there a cost to students registering for the program? And the second thing is, you know, for the students who are looking at PA, um, med school, and so forth, is there kind of an ideal time, uh, first year, second year, third year, fourth year, uh, and so forth, that they should be doing their um, uh, clinical experience, you know, with the COPE Health Scholars Program or, you know, any type of related program like yours? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there is a cost for the application. It's a $21 processing fee through the um, SurveyMonkey Apply system that we use. So that's for the first question. For the second one, I think, honestly, the earlier the better is what I personally think, as well as the students that I've worked with, especially the ones that are going towards PA, the PA school clinical hours requirement is so high that a lot of the students that don't start early enough start to struggle or take additional, you know, gap years in order to um, keep up with the number of hours that are needed. That's happened to a couple of our students that are currently in the program. So we always say the earlier, the better. And I think that's also true in the sense that let's say you start in your first or second year, then at least, you know, if you have finished the program, you can continue past the 280. But by that time, you might have gotten an employment opportunity or not necessarily at the site level, but also at local clinics. A couple of my, um, the scholars at my site have gone to different clinics near us for medical assistant. And, you know, it's the physicians who have left notes in our binders that are like, hey, I'm hiring, email me at this, you know, email or contact me at this phone number and we'll get you started. It's front office and then we'll train you also for back office and we'll train you as a medical assistant. So I think it opens up more of the doors for opportunities for pipelining into areas too after graduation. So you're always making use of your time throughout your undergrad. And if you take any, you know, gap years in between for medical school, PA school, nursing school, but it really helps to plan ahead. But the nice part is there's also that three-month program. So we've also had plenty of students who found out about the program a little bit late, and they did the three-month program just during that, you know, spring right before the medical school application cycle opened, and they were able to successfully get their application in and put in all of their hours that they did as well. So I think it works all different ways, but the ideal, I always think, is to just start as early as possible. It looks like there's also a question on the application uh, timeline, okay, specifically uh, when should students apply, specific de deadlines, especially in the Orange County area for the application. Yes. So for the application, it is always open. So that's one of the things is it never actually closes. What closes is our cycles. So when can we accept an application 
in order for it to qualify for the coming cycle because there's clearance and training that we have to take into account. So again, the website will have a breakdown every three months. It'll be updated with our new deadlines. Right now, our summer deadlines are all closed, um, but there are going to be opportunities for fall. So if you're looking at the fall deadlines, usually the early bird is around June 15th and the regular deadline is the end of June. And that's gonna be for the orange location. So St. Joseph's of Orange. I know their extended summer application deadline, I believe is today. So if you want to submit your application by today, that would be fine. Um, if you would like to see if there's a way to possibly push that, you can email the admissions team and they can get you in touch with the um, person who oversees the site in Orange. But we are currently mostly all recruiting now for the fall, which is applications due by June. However, you can apply at any time. So you could submit the application anytime between now and June to be able to qualify for the fall class.